basically my backstory. Um, I actually went, I'm from South Carolina, well kind of. My parents are Puerto Rican, so I kind of grew up there and they were born, raised there. My dad joined the army and we moved to the States. So I, my brother, my sister and I kind of grew up around, like moved over two years of our lives. So we got to really know a lot of people, a lot of backgrounds, things like that. And so I ended up going to the University of South Carolina where I studied visual communications and photography. I wanted to do fine art photography, but my parents were very like, well, maybe just get a little journalism. And I was like, okay, cool. So um, I ended up studying journalism, illustration, design, videography, all of that. And ended up finding an internship at Popular Mechanics in New York City where I wasn't expecting that that's where I wanted to go. I kind of wanted to end up in Austin, Texas. Just loved it. And um, yeah, I got hired right off of my internship from Popular Mechanics. I spent three months in New York. I actually lived in the building that's connected to this building, which is always mind blowing every single time I walk here. And I worked there for three months, interned as hard as I could, basically built like telescopes, ran errands, went to mood fabrics if we needed to build something for the set, stuff like that. And it was a really good experience. And then my boss loved me so much that she hired me right off. And I finished my undergrad while I was working full time for Pocket Mechanics Magazine. And that was really hard. I was studying for a chemistry final as we were closing a magazine, which is very difficult, but totally easy to do. You know, you gotta do it. Um, so yeah, from there, I was their assistant photo editor and I was able to kind of jump into photo editing and kind of learn that aspect of the world, which I wanna kind of talk to you guys about and how that works. So with the photo editor position, it's basically, it's not technically photo editing, which I was kind of like, okay, so I'm not retouching, I'm not cropping, I'm not color correcting, all of that. It's really hiring photographers for stories that, you know, editors want you to do and producing the whole thing. And it's on a very low budget. And so it was one of those things where I got to bring in really young talent, really great up and comers, because I always think photographers nowadays deserve that one chance. We all do, and I was given that chance for myself, and so I always keep that in mind when I hire people. So for this, it was one of my favorite shoots of all time. It was my biggest shoot to date, and um, it actually got the cover, which is super awesome. It was about the new technology and outdoor um, equipment. So I was able to permit for a giant ATV race in, I think it was Montclair upstate, and I had to get permits for every single ATV. My editor-in-chief wanted to bring his seven-year-old son, so I also had to figure out how to get a seven-year-old up there, and make sure he was okay the entire time. And he also wanted an outfit, so I found him an outfit that was very cute for him, and they're all decked out in the coolest gear, and it was all about the tech. And Puppy's Mechanics was kind of different for me because I always thought of myself as like going into fashion or going into fashion photography or beauty or anything like that, but learning different aspects of different types of photography that you need, like, like ATVs and motion and getting sports, you're able to still find and be that photographer that's able to do various things. You just have to put yourself there. Like I chose one of my really good friends and he's a very big up and comer. This was all shot on film because I was like, I want that grittiness. I want it to be like very outdoorsy and very like the natural feel. And he was perfect for that. And it took a lot of like, you know, talking with my editor in chief and telling them like, oh, this is gonna work, this is gonna be great. And it ended up working really well. And it was a great shoot. This was another one that I did with one of my good friends. Um, there's a lot of times when it comes to like photo editor positions where you have to find photographers in different locations. So this one was in California. This is um, one of the main women um, firefighters, and they have this huge, like, I can't, can't remember exactly what it is, but they basically have, she makes sure, like, you know, forest fires and all of that are stopped, and it's a big team of just women, which we were like, okay, well, we want to really, like, show that in the magazine, and I want her to be strong and stoic, so... I found a local, which is a lot of times, like most editors, if you know, if you guys are like, oh, I'm local to New York City, or I have family in LA, and so I'm able to be local there. Local is basically meaning like, we don't have to pay for your flights. And sometimes 
in the bigger scheme of things, which I'll get to with like advertising and stuff, that's a really big deal for like clients. They want to know that you're able to be in any spot. So basically, I was able to find a local for my friend that was actually in San Francisco and be like, hey, I can't pay you much travel, but I can give you a really big day rate to be able to go out and do this. But I paid his gas mileage and things like that. And so that's a lot of times what goes into a photo shoot itself. It's not just getting the images anymore. It's a lot about like, what are the necessary needs for you guys so that I can take care of you? You know, so that was a really fun one for me. I thought it came out beautifully. Um, this is another one that we did. It was called Tools They Use in Popular Mechanics, where we would focus on, you know, artisans all around New York, all around anywhere in the States. And we found this place that literally makes neon signs from scratch. And they have a very, like, all ethnicities in their team, which is one reason why we really want to showcase them. And they do it all by hand. And so one really hard thing I feel like is capturing neon. I feel like no matter what in photography, that's one of the hardest things to capture. So one of my really good friends that I'm actually still super close with today, um, he really focuses on neon lights. And I knew exactly who I wanted to go to. I knew exactly what to do. And so we were able to get like, my editor in chief was like, I want props of not only, you know, I want a wide shot of the maker, but I also want propped in images to kind of get different feels of everything. So whenever, if you're ever on a photo shoot or, you know, always get more than you need. That's always the rule. I'll always ask for it. You know, I'll always be like, here's the necessary shot list. But hey, if you see like a flicker of light from the, like him heating the neon or like the, like the glass, whatever it's called, um, capture that. That might end up being a cover or something like that. So it's always good to always give a little extra. And we'll always ask at the end. We'll be like, do what you want, please. Or, you know, so, because the whole point of hiring a photographer is because of your eye. So don't ever think that someone's gonna hire you just because I like to say, like, they always, you know, the idea of a photographer is just someone pressing the shutter button. You're not. It's really, they hire you because of the way that you see things. And so if I'm hiring someone, I wanna be like, yeah, I need these specifics, but give me what you feel, because that in the end is exactly what I want. And then the next one, so I also varied into like food photography as well, which was kind of a different vibe because when it comes to food photography, you really have to style the drinks and all of that. And that necessarily comes with a whole set of different options where you have to find a food stylist, you have to make sure like the cup doesn't look too weird or like there's not a splashback or like this was, um, I think it was his grandmother's recipe of eggnog and I feel like only sometimes eggnog looks that good. I mean, I'm not a huge fan, but you know, he uses them. But um, basically, it can look a little weird. And so basically, I was like, hey, I need someone on set that's a good friend of mine. This was in Charleston, which is very hard to find a really, really great food photographer in Charleston on a low budget, I'm just saying. But he was able to have a food stylist that was his friend that was happy to do it for like a really low budget for me, and I was able to finesse it. So it worked out really well. That's a learning curve. But, and then this next one, so after going through my editorial world and shooting for magazines and hiring, working on budgets that were super low and kind of, you're basically an editorial, you're trying to get as much as you can with a little bit that you have. And that's a great way to start. It's a great way to start shooting for editorial magazines because you start learning what you can get with what you have, but then also seeing how you can stretch the boundaries. And I feel like that's a lot of, you know, what photography and film is all about. So after I was in my editorial world, um, I shifted to being a photography agent, which is a whole new world, and it's all advertising. So it's big, like jobs, like, have you guys ever, it's, it's like a, I think it's like a hair and makeup, they come to your house and they do it for you, it's called Glam Squad. I had never heard of it, and they were launching a beauty, like beauty thing or beauty line. So we were the first ones to shoot for them. They wanted how-to tutorials, which is like the video aspect, they wanted stills, they wanted gifts, they wanted everything. And they wanted a gold bathtub and a whole studio to makeshift a whole bathroom, but it wasn't really a bathroom. So it was, you know, it goes from being, hey, can you hit up on a Saturday and go upstate and take a picture of a car for me to, I need a gold plated bathtub, I need a fur towel, I need this, this, and this, like everything changes and that's a whole different world. So. 
jumping into this was really fun for me because I feel like once you get to understand the little bit from the editorial world and how crazy that can get, you can do anything. So I, I urge you guys to always think about reaching out to editorial magazines and talking to them because they can really like, once you get your feet wet there, you can go anywhere from there. It's really the best stepping stone. So this was a shoot that I did with um, my photographer that I rep closest, and that's Tori Rust. Um, I actually started repping her because we're the same age, and my agency was like, oh, they're gonna be like best friends. <laughs> they were right, we're best friends now. We text each other more than our own partners. <laughs> it's true. Um, yeah, so she did this, and I work really close with her where like, I build estimates. So really, it's kind of talking to the photographer and being like, okay, so what do you need from me? How can I make this shoot the easiest for you? Where then you guys will tell me, okay, so my day rate is at 3K, and I need my first assistant that I love. This is his rate. I need my Digitech that I work with all the time. This is his rate. This is his Digi package. Like, I work with you to, that, to a point where you don't have to think about anything. It's really you show up to the shoot and you kill it, and I will handle the bugging. And in the end, you send me an invoice and we're all good to go. So it's a different world, but after a while, you really get the hang of it, and each shoot kind of differs. So like going from Glam Squad to Rent the Runway, this was a little bit more difficult. I didn't produce this one, which I'm very glad I didn't because it was on a rooftop. And when the rooftop is involved, there's like permits and crazy things. And I was like, I'm good. But yeah, so this is one of their summer, I think it was their summer launch. And it was actually storming outside. But Tori is a magician and able to get a beautiful sky with I don't know exactly what equipment she used and they're retouching, so it all worked out really well. Um, the Adidas shoots that I've done before have been really fun. They're always their lookbooks, and recently we did a Coachella one, we did their neon um, arcade, which was I think in Coney Island. And so this water one, like the one that's the Coachella, um, that one was a little difficult. She had to shoot at about 2 a.m. to make sure like, they got the perfect, well, I think they started at 2 a.m. and then did it until the morning or something, a weird timing. But basically, there's a bunch of DJs that were like going to be at Coachella and she photographed them all night long. This was done in about, this was a one day shoot with like pre-production for about like two weeks. So it's usually that's how it works. Like your agent or let's say your, you know, photo editor or someone like that. It won't just happen like the day before. There have been times that I was a photo editor and I was like, can you go tomorrow and shoot this piece of metal? Thank you. But I usually like give you a decent rate because I asked you so late. But usually like most pre-production will last about a week, a week or two based on like kind of something simple like this. But if it's something like, let's say I worked on a recent pharma job, which is like pharmaceuticals, I worked on a Botox shoot. That is like a month of pre-production where you're like, getting set designers, you're doing casting, and all of those things. So luckily, they'll vary, and they're all really great and really fun, but like I said before, they're all varied and different. Like, you can go from editorial being small, quick, and fast, but then you've got advertising jobs that take longer, and you have more input, and you have more time, and you get to talk about these influencers that you want to photograph, or these models you've worked with that you love, or the stylist. You can bring your team on, which is so fun. And a lot of times, like like for this one, this was um, bustle.com times Calvin Klein. So it was a branded content, which I'm assuming you guys already know, branded content is huge now. It's basically the new ad where like Refinery29 does it a lot, where they'll like grab like ASOS or something like that and they'll do like Instagram posts. This was for, you know, Calvin Klein and it was very just, Tori was able to bring her whole entire team on. It was a super low budget project, but she was like, I want to do it. It's body positive. It's super inclusive of like women of color and just everything. And it was perfect for her book. And she just felt really proudly about it. And it might have been a lower rate, but that's the thing. You get to a point when you start to get to choose what you want to do and what you don't. And there's always pride in that where even when you're starting to begin, there are times like, like with Tori, she's been shooting for maybe, honestly, I think like five years, six years, so she's like pretty still fresh, but you know, she's got a little time under her belt, but she still feels like nowadays, like she can't say no to things, but if you don't feel passionate about a project, you can say no and that's okay. 
because there's always a way to flip it and being like, hey, sorry, like she's really busy right now, or you know, this isn't really up their alley, but you know, we'd be happy to take you out to lunch and we can talk more about projects that are coming up. So there's always a way to spin it if you don't feel comfortable or you're not really in love with the project, and that's okay. Always stay strong with what you want to do. That's really important when it comes to this. This was for CoverGirl. This was very fun. Um, super low budget, which was surprising, but yes. Super low budget, it's super fun. Um, Tori was really into um, beauty shoots, so we've been diving a lot into that, so a lot of the retouching is a really big deal for this kind of thing, and also learning that aspect. Kind of getting to know like your crew is a really big aspect of like a lot of these shoots, like retouchers that you know, friends that you're like, that they really want to start jumping into that world, keep them close. Because, you know, there's a lot of times that advertising agencies or editorial magazines will ask you to retouch in-house. Like, they'll be like, can you take it over? Can you do it? And that's an extra amount of money in your pocket, which is always clutch. And it's really, a lot of times, like, magazines or advertising agencies don't really want a lot of retouching anyways. A lot of it's minimal, no beauty, no anything. Like, they don't want you getting rid of the pores anymore. And so I think it's always good to like make sure that you keep your friends really close, especially in this industry. If you have friends that are Digitex, use them. Keep them close. You know, if you have first assistants you love, if you have retouchers, if you have other photographer friends, like that's how you get to know people in this industry. Like friends of a friend of a friend is always how you get a job. And I think that's a really big aspect. This one was for Avon. Avon loves gifts. I did not include one because they're crazy. But hey, this is one of their new um, face wash lines. Yeah, so Avon is very like cute, fun, lighting. Um, the stylus is always very difficult because you have to make sure like the mask is perfect. But you know, we ended up making it work. So I included some of my fun stuff because um, since I went to not only like did I study photography and all of that, but I also studied graphic design and animation. And one big thing that I always want to like talk about is how photography is one aspect of yourself. Like each person is as talented or more. So always venture into new things. You know, like if you want to do photography, you want to do film, you want to do design, you want to do animation, go for it. Just dabble. You might as well. And a lot of times clients want that. Like there are numerous times that my clients are like, can we get a cinemagraph? Can we get her to like doodle on our images or can we get a gif but then have like an illustration coming from the back and like coming in like it's all like that and if they can have a one-stop shop it's more money but then it's more all about you like they want you only and so i think that if you can dabble in other things and if you're really like oh like i love like designing like typography or i like you know dabbling in gifts like i literally did this for my partner because he is a music producer so i was like oh i'll make him an album cover we just posted it on instagram and it went it did great so it was just like you know there's all these good ways to flex muscles so go for it and this is other stuff that i would do for just fun you know because it's fun to test things out you know and then here's one thing that i always want to say Use your social media as much as you can. That's how we find photographers nowadays. It sounds silly and it kind of sucks that the whole world is turning into Instagram, but it is. Like, the numerous times that I've been asked that Tori sends her Instagram page as inspiration. Like, numerous times. So keep up on your Instagram pages. No one, like, it's always good to have a website and so whenever you're pitching something to an agency or you're like hey can you connect me with this person create like a little um what do you, like a little strip of like three images that are your favorite and that you think that the client would really love insert that into the email because it shows that you care a little bit more and that you understand what their brand is talking about and knowing that you already kind of have that idea in your head they're like oh cool so we barely have to really tell her much but she or he or she'll get it you know so i think Really keep up on your self-branding. I know it sounds silly and none of us really want to hear it, but it really is important. And I feel like if you do it in the way that you want to do it and not what everybody else is doing, you're going to be just fine and you're going to love posting things. You're going to be like, yeah, I shot this. I designed that. Like, it's really empowering after a while and being able to see like what clients see from that and then take it and then finding 
images you shot on a mood board from one of your clients. Like, that's the best part. Like, just like, oh, cool, I am awesome. Mm -hmm. So yeah. And then I made that, because I was bored. <laughs> was fine. But yeah, so I think really at the end of the day, you know, I've pretty much touched on a lot of the photo industry, and I never thought that I would be where I'm at. And I think it's always room for growth. Like, you know, just make sure you're still testing and you're still practicing and you're still randomly going out with your friends and putting on crazy outfits and posting the images afterwards. Like, do all of that. Like, even though it, it gets tiring or you feel like no one's seeing you or anything like that, there is gonna be a day. There's always a day. Whether it's small or it's large, there's gonna be a day. So I think just keep an open mind, keep pushing forward, and meet people. Go talk with people, send them emails, and I know if you don't get a response, because we all love to ghost, I do it myself, I am so sorry. <laughs> but, you know, people get emails a lot during the day, so it's hard. But, um, yeah, just like, keep talking to people, meet each other, go to like, hangouts, go get coffee, like, get to know people, because the people that I know from Popular Mechanics are now at Forbes, are now, at title where like he's like designing things for Beyonce's birthday stuff like that where I'm like you were my best friend like three years ago and now you're killing it like keep me posted you know <laughs> like you gotta do those things so I think you know keep up with people and I know it's hard sometimes because I'm an anxious person so I'm never like always wanting to go out always wanting to do things but if it's something you love it's not that hard and Coffee's always great. You can do tea if you want to, you know, <laughs> lunches. But yeah, so I think, you know, really make sure you meet people. Keep doing what you want to do. Dabble in everything. And if you don't like it, then stop. There's always an option to do that. And, you know, just know that the way that you see things is important and it matters. And it might not seem like that right now, but someone, like someone at an agency, like I might see something and be like, oh, we should bring you in for a meeting because a lot of times, like, the way that my agency works is I'll find new up-and-comers and I'll bring them in and I'll work with them on the side. I won't take any, because how agency works is like you take a certain commission from someone's day rate. And if you're on like the off roster, I'll be like, no, I'll help you create the estimate. I'll help you like use this lingo so that you're not pigeonholed to something that could happen. And that's another big aspect. You don't want to ever like say something too much. You don't want to promise too much. But there's always ways to finesse it without being like, oh sure, like I'll look into this, but I have to, you know, like, so there's always ways to approach agencies and be like, I would love to just hear how you guys approach things or how you do things. And someone will take you off roster and kind of work with you and let you see that kind of world. And if they see, if they think you're good for the job, and let's say like, I had a job come up that was with DoorDash and it was a huge, like a huge food shoe and they wanted an up and comer. And luckily, like a lot of my friends are still like working to build their like repertoire and everything. And they got it. And it was one of those things where I was like, okay, so just keep us posted on everything you're doing. Keep your Instagram going, send us emails randomly. Like I would say like every quarter, you know, send a nice like newsletter, just create one, maybe even like a lot of my friends do it in like MailChimp or um, just create a little template in Photoshop, send it out and then people are gonna click. And if they like it, they send it to their group of people because that's what I do. So really just keep doing what you wanna do and just keep pushing forward and keep poking people and being like, hey, would love to talk, would love to hang out. Like we have this friend that's connected to this friend, like, you know, so just keep doing that and it'll work out. But yeah, so if you guys have any questions, I'm super friendly. Please ask, <laughs> as you haven't already noticed. Please ask. Please. I'll just sit here and stare at you if you don't. So. <laughs> yeah. I think I have a question. Yeah. Honestly, I'm, I'm not going to hear me. Yeah, yeah. OK. Uh, I graduated in 2011 <laughs> uh, from Mirror Film Academy. And I've been shooting for almost like eight years. And I've been looking for an agent for a long time. Yeah. But I always email agencies and like, Ghosting and ghosting. Yeah, I always find uh, jobs through my network, as you kept saying. Yeah. That's the best way, I think. But I also heard 
that all those agents are looking for photographers who have big clients so that it's going to be easy for them. Oh, you have lots of clients. All right, great. Let's work with you. I mean, I have clients too, but it's not like huge and big clients. I'm trying to, you know, find my own tiny clients and make more, you know, work. Yeah. So is, is it true or I just wanted to learn the real deal? Yeah, no, I feel you completely. And I'm, you. I'm super about transparency. Um, yeah, so it's 50-50. It's I'm more on the 50% side of I prefer the up and comer. Like I, that's just who I am and that's who I've worked with. But in large agencies, which is like, I'm a part of a pretty big agency, a lot of times people are looking for, if you've been around for a while, like let's say like, you know, eight to 15 years, they are looking for clients that you've worked with that are larger. But there's never like, I have had instances when people have been around for a while where they just still test you. They still test, like, if none of our photographers want to do the project, they'll put you in the mix. So I guess it just really depends on the agency. Like, we've had a few times where we've had a photographer, like, come in and they brought Dior. They brought in, like, all of these crazy big brands, but then others have nothing. Like, they go from editorial magazines like New York Times and stuff like that. So, like... It really differs, but I think, I guess it just depends on what you're looking for. Like, what kind of agency and what kind of things do you shoot and what do you feel like who you've been contacting? Because that's probably a main part of it. Like, if it's a big fashion and beauty, like, agency, they only want big brands. Because at the end of the day, the agency wants to make a 25% commission. And it's, it's the sad part about it, but it is all about the money for agency and they want to take care of their you know their photographers but it really is like it depends on which one you're looking for so I think I think it is true and then there's also that 50% of like the agencies that are like no but we want to take care of you too and we want to build you to be like oh so you're gonna be that one person that's gonna shine at this like few moments and then it's just gonna snowball and that's kind of you know like like with Tori like my photographer she started shooting for mainly editorials like Man Repeller and stuff like that that barely paid. Now she's shooting for Botox and like Timberland and Sorrel and stuff like that that are huge brands that she didn't bring in. So it's like, I think there's always different agencies looking for different things. But you're right, I do think that there's some that are very just, if you don't have that big brand, they're gonna just ghost you, but yeah. But if you wanna let me know what you're looking for, I do have friends in other agencies, so let a girl know, and I will try and send you some. Thank you. Yeah, I'll that are actually like nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all about okay. that. Okay. Yeah. Other questions? Okay, I have one. Um, can you talk a little bit about the estimating process and how you work with photographers, and also how are you guys looking at and coming up with numbers that fit to potentially land jobs? Yeah. So the estimating process is pretty. It's a good learning curve. I actually didn't know how to do it until I became an agent. And so basically the day rate is based on the usage of the images. So the usage is, um, let's say, are they going to have billboards? Are they going to have out of home, which is billboards? Um, are they going to have subway wraps? Are they going to have in magazine advertisements? Like stuff like that. So it really just bases on that. So let's say like if it's digital and social media, the usage, like the rate is pretty low. So for the bustle and CK one, that was I believe 550 for the day, but because it was only social media. And so that really doesn't, although we use social media constantly, it's not a big, it's not a big like platform. But if it's in perpetuity, which is completely full buyout, which is something that you, if anyone ever comes across those words, just be very weary because that means you don't have any rights to any of those images. You need a big day rate if you have it in perpetuity. Um, yeah, so I think it's just based on what the usage is for the images, what your typical day rate is. So a lot of our photographers at the agency start at 3,000. That's the lowest they'll go unless they're like, it's a friend of a friend. Um, and then from there, if the usage is like four years, if they wanna buy additional, then their day rate goes up on based on how much the images are going to be used or circulated. And then from there, I talk with the photographer very openly. It could be a text, it could be a call, email. And I'm like, okay, so these are our typical rates for the Digitech assistance, um, your lighting and photo equipment. 
if usually I pad it to like the agent will always pad your numbers so to make sure if you ever go over you won't get in trouble so we typically pad them to like 1500 1750 that's a very typical number it's actually a little more than you probably <laughs> need but it works um, then we'll also add in like miscellaneous if you need to take an uber to the shoot an uber back home you're covered um, just little things like that where when you get to know a photographer and you get to know your crew and you get to know like who you want to constantly work with you kind of get to understand those numbers more where across the board like for Tori and I used to work with Meredith Jenks um, their numbers were the same like 450 for first assistant did you was 500 1100 for their did you package like stuff like that where you just start to learn those things and then also it just also depends on the big project so if it's a big advertising job we'll most likely give you a third assistant or a second and third like and we'll also like make sure that your equipment is a little bit more like 1750 or 2000 or you know if you need um like any motion or video video cameras budget in for that so it really the estimating process is really based on what the creative is, what the budget is from the client, which is always good to ask. If a client is ever like, hey, are you available these two days, these three days? Always ask if they have a budget in mind. It's always good to know because you don't want to shoot it out of the park because they will not come back. I have done that before. It is very sad. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's really just that. And then it's really just getting to know, like finding your people in that crew and knowing what they need and then also knowing what you need to execute the project perfectly. So that's where the estimate process comes in. Can I follow up that yeah. question a little bit? So let's back that out even further. So to the point where you just get a call from an ad agency saying, hey, we want to put this shoot together. What kind of questions are you asking them and how are you getting to the point where you can then go to the photographer and say, okay, here's the shoot. This is what's entailed in the shoot. Let's come up with what you need. Yeah. It's funny, I literally, I swear I had this memorized because I do it all the time. It's like literally I just copy and paste it in every email. So always ask where the location is, what the usage is, if they have a budget in mind, and if they have any creative. Always look at the creative first because if you don't like it, there's no point. Like, because then you're just in a rabbit hole and then you have to awkwardly back out and be like, oh no, she's busy, but really you just don't like it. It's really awkward, but you know, you can do it. Um, but yeah, so you basically always ask usage, always ask location, always ask creative, also like budget. And then there's also like, you can ask like, I'm trying to think of what else would be a good question to ask. I think those are a good start. Cause usually they're pretty quick to respond because then they're like, even when I'm on a call, I'm like, let me know these. Oh, and dates. Always ask about the dates. That's really important. Cause if you're not available, you're not available. But yeah, so those are like just very plain and simple like questions, just knowing the background of what it is. And then that's from there, I'll take it to my photographer and we'll talk it through, look at the creative. And if they like it, we'll be like, oh, she's super interested or he's super interested. Um, we'd love to talk more. Can we set up a conference call? So from there, always get on a call with the client. The client loves to talk. They love to talk about their own stuff. So just talk to them because they will talk your ear off but they know that you're interested because you're talking to them. So always set up that call, have your agent or have like, if you have a team, like like a first assistant that's pretty close with you, have them on the call too. It's always good to have a second ear and always take notes on the calls because sometimes agents, well, sometimes agents, you like to change things up. So it's always good to have a little bit of back end on it. So, so yeah, just very simple date, location, usage, budget, and creative. Always ask. Yeah. Other questions? Is this, okay, cool. Um, thank you so much for everything you've shared um, so far. And um, I guess my question, first I was going to ask a bit about like um, how to find an agent of representation, but um, since you've covered that, I guess my other question would be kind of what um, are like important elements of the portfolio that you look at when you're like looking at like Especially like photographers who don't have as many like you know big clients or anything. Yeah. Um, like I guess the question is kind of about like how do you differentiate yourself, and is there any like overlooked element that photographers don't usually think of but is important when reps are thinking about? That's a fantastic question. I just want you to know because I feel like no one ever asks that and it's so important, especially when it comes to like 
agencies, and not only agencies, but like you know, when you get out there, you're gonna go on meetings, and people love books. They love photo books. And iPads are great, they're easy, but there's something about having the paper and flipping through it and kind of having that old school feel to things. You know, you really care about it. So I think the differentiating yourself, that's really like for you. So let's say like you really want to do beauty, focus on that, like really show that. But also, you know, there's always a good juxtaposition of like showcasing the beauty shot with a smear of the beauty or a shot of the beauty and then a full image. You know, like there's always a way to make the art happen and I think that's kind of where design also comes into play and there's always ways to like, you know, check out like, I usually use like Behance and stuff like that to show like, <coughs> kind of check out like, oh, these are what people are doing, this is kind of the design world, but then take it into your photo world and just be like, okay, so this is how this lays out with this, this tells the perfect story. Um, I watch out for paper. I never, the glossy has a bad glare. And all photo editors call it out, but they won't tell you. <laughs> so just don't, like, don't do glossy. Because we'll, like, talk about it and we'll be like, yo, I couldn't see half of it because the light was hitting it. And so, you know, like, it's just one of those things. But, and uh, I'm trying to think. And also fun cropping. We love that. Like, really take the book and make it yourself. Like, show exactly who you want to be in those pages. That's what we want to see. Get a nice thing. Like, there's a lot of book um, printing places that'll do, like, linen covers. Like, put your, you know, make a logo. Make it stand out. Have a leave behind. Leave behinds are fantastic. We always want them. It's always clutch for us to just show them around the room at my office and be like, check out this small pamphlet someone sent me, all of that. So just think about those things. But really, at the end of the day, your book is yours. And as long as it feels like it speaks to who you want to be, go that direction. But just be mindful of the paper. So, Lobster, yeah. Matte. I love matte, but that's like a personal preference. But I think it looks better <laughs> overall. But like that's just me. But yeah, I love when people bring matte, you know, books. And a lot of my photographers only have matte, just because like the coloring just comes out so great and so crisp. But yeah, it's just really you know. Have a lead behind, make sure you pick, you know, a good paper that's not too glossy, and figure out the design and the layout, because it's really important, and don't go too crazy with the pages. Um, you don't want to have too many pages, because we get tired of looking after, like, 30? About 30. That's, like, that's, yeah, about 30. I'm, like, trying to picture all the books that I've dealt with. Like, I have a book at the office that literally weighs like 60 pounds, but his name is Mitch Feinberg, and he's one of our photographers, and he's a huge beauty shooter, well, and a still life shooter, but he like creates walls of feathers to just be for like a shoe that's from Elle magazine that has feathers on it, like he loves that stuff. But his book is super heavy, and I love it because I have to look through it, but like I only go halfway because I'm just like tired. But yeah, so keep it to 30, keep it nice and sweet, but also don't cut yourself too short. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Any other questions? No. Okay, great. Yeah. Well, Tita, thank you so much for being here. It was yeah. really informative, and thanks for sharing all this sort of inside you know, tips about how the agency works and how you landed there. Yeah, thanks, thanks for having me. It was fun. Great. It was a talk. <laughs>